In one of our earliest and most popular video blogs, Nick and I filmed a screencast of how to install WordPress 2.8. As WordPress is now up to version 3.0.1, we've decided to update our previous video and show you the up-to-date installation process. Much like in our previous video, we will also show you the first two major settings that you'll probably wish to make, setting up permalinks, and changing the name of the directory from WordPress to whatever you like. So if you're looking to install WordPress on your website for the first time, the first thing I'd recommend doing is having a look at the system requirements at wordpress.org forward slash about forward slash requirements. And like it says, all you need to have is PHP version 4.3 and you'll also need a MySQL database. Now, if you're not sure whether your hosting is compatible, um, WordPress tell you what to do here, even like making some text available, you can uh, copy and paste an email to your hosting company for support. But if you're confident that you have the correct settings on your server and you have a MySQL database ready, the next thing you want to do is to download WordPress at wordpress.org forward slash download. Simply push the blue button and this will download the zip folder onto your computer. So the domain name that I'm going to use to uh, do this example installation is crearia.co.uk. This is just a uh, domain name that we have kicking about. So um, I've downloaded the files, like I said, to my desktop. I've unzipped them and you'll notice that the folder is just simply called WordPress. And I've just copied and pasted that into my local files folder, which is where I'm storing the files locally for my website. I then set up a site in Dreamweaver to manage my website. So um, I'm just really using Dreamweaver for the FTP uh, tool that's built into it. And obviously you can use any FTP client like Cyberduck to upload your files to the server. Now to save time, I've simply already uploaded the WordPress folder in its entirety on the remote view. And again, I haven't changed the name of the folder from WordPress, I've just kept it as WordPress. Once you've done that, if you go back to your local view, your local file, and open up the WordPress folder, and you're looking for a file called wpconfigsample.php. So this is the file that WordPress needs to connect to your database. So when you set up your MySQL database, you should obviously have the name, user, and password to connect to it. So I'm just gonna enter them for the one that I've created, which is just Creator WP, and I've just set the same uh, same username, name, and uh, password, so it's all the same, so I'm just going to paste that there and there. Now, MySQL database is local to my server, so I can simply leave the host name to local host. If your MySQL database is on an external server, you may have an IP address, so simply paste that in there. You also notice if you scroll down, you can enter um, other settings like the uh, auth key and secure key, and, uh, where you can put phrases in if you uh, accidentally lock yourself out, and also the table prefix, which is quite important. If you have other uh, items or other WordPress installations on your server, you may wish to change this. So uh, you can just leave it as wp underscore, or you can name it anything you like. So let's just say wp database. Okay. Now, once you've entered your settings like I have on this file, Simply hit save and close it, and then rename the file from w WP config sample to just WP config. So you're simply deleting the last hyphen and sample, so you end up with just WP config.php. And then you want to upload that single file to the remote view. So that's a new file that we've essentially created. So now that we've uploaded all the files and customized the WP config file with our database settings, we're ready to uh, install WordPress onto the database. So like I said, I'm using crearia.co.uk and I've installed the files, so I uploaded the files onto forward slash WordPress. So let's simply go to forward slash WordPress. So WordPress has automatically taken me to the installation page. Now, if you had a problem with your WP config file, it wouldn't bring the screen up. It would let you know that there is an error on your config file. So if you're seeing this page like I am, then it means that your WP config file um, is set up successfully. So let's enter the simple information here that we need to install WordPress. So the site title, um, let's just say Crearia example. Obviously this would be the name of your blog, so put in um, anything that you like. Then we can enter the username to access WordPress. In previous versions this had to be admin. Uh, we can now uh, set this up as anything we choose, so I'll just put James. And same thing with the password now. Um, previously, it would give you a, uh, a password key, whereas now you can specify your own custom one from the outset. So let's just uh, type a password in.
and then obviously enter your email address. The last box at the bottom, obviously leave that ticked if you wish your search engine to be crawled and cached by the major search engines. So let's install WordPress. And that's it. So uh, we've uh, now got the success page. WordPress has been installed. And I can now go and log in to the dashboard by clicking the login button. So let's use James and the password that I specified. As you can see, I've logged into the uh, WordPress dashboard. And if I click on the uh, title in the top left, I'll be taken to the live working version of WordPress on the server. So now that you've got WordPress installed on your uh, on your website, there's a few settings that you may wish to change almost instantly, instantly sorry, which I uh, always change. Now the first one is the fact that I don't like that the, the, the WordPress installation is in a folder called WordPress. Um, let's say, for example, I wanted to rename that to blog. Simply go to settings in the left hand uh, navigation and click general. And then simply locate the WordPress URL and the site address. As you can see, they're currently set as WordPress and then just simply change those to uh, whatever you wish to name your WordPress folder. Now, if you're looking to install WordPress on the root layer of your website, we've actually done a separate uh, video blog which explains to you how to do that. So I'm just going to change my folder to blog. I'm going to push save. Now we're going to be given a error 404 page um, once this loads. And this is quite simply because the uh, now that we've changed the settings to forward slash blog, there aren't actually any files in a folder called blog on our remote view. If you remember, they're actually in a folder called WordPress. So if you see the error 404 page like I have, don't worry, you haven't done anything wrong. All you've got to do is just change on the remote view the name of the folder from WordPress to whatever you've renamed it to. So in my example, I've uh, specified I'd like to have it as blog. So I'm just going to the remote view and changing the folder titled WordPress to blog. And you'll obviously need to do this on the local view as well. So now if I delete the uh, the string to leave me with the URL crearia.co.uk forward slash blog forward slash WP login, I'll now be able to log in to the dashboard under blog instead of WordPress. So let's just log back in. You'll see that the we're now successfully working in the dashboard under forward slash blog. And if we visit the website at forward slash blog, all the files should have been successfully moved and we can navigate our way around the website in the, in the directory that we've named. Now the second thing that I always like to do after installing WordPress is to set up the permalinks. And you can do this by uh, again using the left hand menu and going to settings. So if that's collapsed just push the, uh, the arrow and permalinks. Now by default WordPress will display your, uh, your blog post pages um, with database query strings. So once this page decides to load. So as you can see, this is the default permalink structure that WordPress installs. And these are actually database queries. So if you'd rather have the more usable and SEO friendly permalink structure for your blog, simply uh, choose one of the common settings or you can specify your own in this box. And then scroll down and hit save. So my permalink structure has been updated. And if I view the website now, you'll see that when I navigate around the website, I see a more um, usable and SEO friendly domain name structure. So that's how to install the latest version of WordPress, rename the folder and also set up permalinks. Thank you for watching this week's video. Don't forget you can find more of our WordPress videos on our blog or YouTube channel.